Noon and conditions getting hotter by the moment, a humid day yesterday, but our race was as evening turned into night, they are very different feel, but it's much warmer, the drivers in this 50 minute race are really, really going to have to watch how they treat their tyres, look, track temperature pushing up towards 44 degrees, humidity of 65%, that will not be comfortable, but look, the tall poplars are blowing in the wind. There is a breeze that at least will be welcome. We had a cracking race last night with victory going to Milos Pavlovich. But the driver who was the star of the race, Carol Bash, came up from 16th and in half a race got up to fourth place. Bad news for the position today. He's starting from pole position. It was his teammate, Andrei Luvinkowski, who qualified down the order. But uh, this afternoon, it's all about Carol Bash. Can anyone live with the VS Racing Charger? He's starting from pole position car number 16 and alongside him another car in the pro-am class two pro-am cars on the front row that's impressive uh, that's loris spinelli he's sharing with uh, gerard van der horst but a fabulous pack field of cars lamborghini seem to really belong at Mizano. it's a tricky circuit 16 turns knitted into 4.226 kilometers they come at the drivers thick and fast even the straights don't really feel like so uh, right now the main concern for all the teams is keeping their drivers cool calm and collected and their machinery also at the right operating temperature it's very very warm out on the grid there is loris spinelli italian veteran racer who really really knows lamborghinis knows Mizano, and is going to be a real feature but has he got the pace to live with the flying pole carol bash who just um was a world kart champion back in 2015 and uh, just has come on super strong since he turned to cars a handful of years ago 2018, he was a European Lamborghini champion, so he comes with a, a pedigree clear for all to see. But his sheer pace in the number 16 last night as he ran in the second half of the race in darkness and picked off cars almost at will was quite remarkable. Drivers, you can see, walking to their cars. This will be the driver who's not about to take the car over. Masks on as per the COVID uh, precautions required here, but we're racing, so all the teams having to adhere to all the conditions and we are delighted to be able to do so because racing is what really really matters to everybody up and down this paddock dean stoneman had a good fine run yesterday he's starting from fourth on the grid he's one of the drivers who'll be racing solo that last night he got shuffled down the order a bit after the pit stops we had been running third fell back down to seventh but uh, looking strong for the Bernaldi racing team. He's starting alongside the bright green car of kika galbiati who took two wins here last year with his teammate Vito Postiglione ended up second to the chequered flag last night. So a point for them to prove. But can they live with the pace of the pole man, Carol Bash? Can they keep close enough to him that when they had the driver changes that their second driver has a chance of chipping away? When Carol hands over to his teammate, Andre Lubinkowski. There's Kiko Galbiati on board. And his teammate Vito Postiglione just has so much Lamborghini racing experience. Drivers all trying, of course, to stay as cool as they possibly can in what is a very hot and sticky afternoon here. The race is due to start, 50-minute race, starting at 20 past the hour. So 12 minutes away. But let's go down to the grid and hear from the driver who's starting from pole position after such an impressive drive last night. Carol Bash. Carol, oh, you had a fantastic race yesterday, literally picking people out through the field as you went through. Starting here today on pole position, clearly it's a strong weekend so far. Are you hopeful for this race? Yeah, the plan is uh, to, to start uh, very well and then push uh, maximum that I can. And then we will see what can happen with my uh, teammate, uh, that he is also really fast and we need to keep, uh, you know, the distance. To, to, to win the program and we will see in overall what, what, what we can do. Excellent. Thank you very much. Have a great race. So that's our pole man, Carol Bash. He'll hand over to his fellow pole, Andrei Lewandowski. Don't forget that car started 16th. Yes. 16th, yes. They worked his way up through the order, up into fourth place. Another driver, really impressive, came away with victory loves, right? Milos Pavlovich, a long-time Lamborghini race. He's been away for a few years. Um, but back with a bang last night for Target Racing, sharing with young Mexican racer Raul Guzman, who's only just moved across to this sort of car, has been a single-seater racer until now. 20-year-old Raul Guzman, so he really enjoyed last night's result. And if they can work their way forward uh, today, that will be very, very good news for their championship challenge. They're starting from sixth place on the grid. This year, we've got quite a new, large number of people new to the championship, moving up from other forms of races, including the car number two that uh, led the race last night, number two. Is the entry one of the entries from Leipzig Motorsport? Sebastian Baltazar and Marcus Paverud. Sebastian 
Marcus will kick off. He was racing in GT4 last year, so he's got a lot more power to play with. And impressively, the driver took pole for the opening race. His teammate, Sebastian Baltasar, last race that started 2016 in junior single seaters, had the past four and a bit seasons off. And here he is uh, running right at the front end of the field. So uh, clearly a combination that people might not have estimated too much of before the start of the season, but they've laid down the gauntlet very early in the championship. And uh, for those who weren't complacent, but those who fancied they were going to be near the front, they're now necessarily a few rows further back because of these newcomers. So really exciting times for the Lamborghini Super Trofeo. Every championship needs new faces in new places. Keeps people on their toes. Car number nine, that's Target Racing. Alberto Di Folco and Kevin Russell, the Danish racer, stepping up from Danish GT racing to the, to the Lamborghinis this year. And let's go down to Car 98 for another interview. Van der Horst, and it's Gerhard Van der Horst and Loris Spinelli. Oh. Loris, sitting here now, desperately trying to keep yourself cool and the car cool. Uh, it's going to be a tough race ahead. Yeah, we did uh, yesterday amazing job and uh, we bring uh, the podium. So today is really hot. Will be really hard for the beginning of the of the race. So we keep pushing and uh, I hope for the best result. Have a great race. Thank you Thank very you. much. What Loris Spinelli doesn't know about racing Lamborghinis isn't worth knowing. 2015, he was the Pro-Am champion in Europe. Then he was the overall champion in 2017. Pro-Am champion again in 2018. He's the ideal teammate. And hopefully he will know very well in nearly 30 degree air temperature and nearly 44 degree tack temperature to how to keep the tyres sweet. Because certainly his teammate, Gerard van der Horst, would like some rubber left to play with in the second half of the race. Driver crossing over to at the Atlantic to play on this side. Patrick Liddy, good success the last couple of years. And he's got Jonathan Chicotto, one of former motorbike, then Formula One racer, Johnny Chicotto's two boys on board. That's another car that's got a very well-balanced driver pairing. So uh, certainly should be strong at the end of the 50 minutes. Last night, uh, didn't pick up the result they were dreaming of. Ended up in eighth. I sense today it could be a few places high up the overall order, maybe even sniffing at a podium finish. Can they get in the top three? We will see. But just bear in mind, the two cars on the front row, Loris Spinelli's and the pole starting Carol Bash, they have AM teammates. They have less experienced teammates. But they're on the front row of the grid, so they should be able to dominate the early stages of the race and build up a lead. But it's a question of what their less experienced teammates can manage in the second half of the race. You could also be sure those front two starters will stay at as long as, possibly, as they possibly can to extend their stints to, closer to as close as they can to half an hour into this 50-minute race before handing over to their teammates. But then the team, well, the, the field and necessary concertina is uh, that their teammates can't manage the pace of the pro drivers in the other cars. But that's all part of the mix in multi-class racing. But for them, they'll be standing in the pit lane. Gerard van der Horst looking to see what Loris Spinelli to do and Andre Lewandowski seeing what Carol Bash could do from pole. What can they build up? number of drivers competing at Misano and other rounds choose to go entirely solo. We've seen Dean Stoneman, who's starting in fourth on the grid. He's doing that. Max Weering, very young Dutch racer, is moving across and making quite a splash. He, too, feels he's young enough, got the vim and vigour to take on the full 50 minutes of racing action. Of course, they have to serve the standard pit stops, minimum pit stop time, too. So no advantage being gained. But what the driver loses in terms of being slightly tired by doing the second stint, they gain by being right on top of the track conditions. One minute until the Lamborghini Urus, that enormous but very quick and powerful safety car, pace car, will lead them round to their rolling start. So the grid now being cleared, the last of the team representatives walking away from their cars. Carol Bash on pole, the white number 16 from Vincenzo Sospiri Racing, alongside the blue and white sort of spangled livery of Van der Horst Motorsport. It's Loris Spinelli who's starting, and Gerard Van der Horst, who traditionally has been racing in the Lamborghini Cup class, uh, suddenly finds his car at the front of the field. So exciting days for the Dutchman. It's going to be quite a battle between Spinelli and Bash at the front, but uh, Galbiati's not exactly going to give ground. And Dean Stoneman, the red and black Benaldi Motorsport car, is also going to see if he can really pitch in at the very front end of the field. We saw him run as high as third yesterday, so he's got the capability. But just reflect on this. Carol Bash took over to do less than half an hour of racing with in 16th place. By the end of the race, he got up to four. Nobody else had overtaken him like he did yesterday. Let's see what he can do from the front. 
So as the cars go around this very warm circuit on a hot but not scalding day, it's 29 to 30 degrees air temperature, much, much hotter in the cars. But the two Pro-Am starters on the front row, or the front row filled by two Pro-Am starters, Carol Bash from Vincenzo Suspiri Racing and Loris Spinelli on at the outside the front row. Then the best of the Pro-Pro pairings, Kiko Galbiati, not a pairing at all. Dean Stone the starting fourth, will do it all on his own. Marcus Pavrud, that car led yesterday for life at Sport. Uh, number two, Patrick Liddy, look for him. He's gaining confidence. He's got the experience. And Kevin Russell, has, starting number eight for Target Racing, is taking to Lamborghinis with aplomb. And Max Wearing, another driver, moving up from a short time in GT Racing into the Lamborghinis. He is also going to go solo. And uh, that will be an interesting race for him. Second of the BS Racing cars, Vincenzo Sospiri, it shared the number six car. Oli Kangas will start, but Eduardo Liberati, he was right at the front end in his stint. So that could be another car that will work its way up the order by dint of having two very strong drivers in it. In the AM class, Giuseppe Fascicolo driving the gold car for Boots on Genian Racing with uh, Eve Claude Yves Gosselin. Looking right down towards the tail of the field, we should have the two Conrad cars. We will see them shortly. Kurt Wagner, sorry, Martin Lechman in one, and the driver who should be at the very tail of the field. I think it's the second of the Conrad cars. Yes, it is with a man called F. Conrad. I wonder if he's related. Of course it is. It's Franz Conrad. He's run that team. He's raced, but it's great to have him back on board. Possibly found there was a spare seat. Realised he still had an operative race license, and uh, he has many candles on his birthday cake right now. But uh, doesn't matter at all. He knows how to race. Wants to race and he's here, so that's fantastic. So we'll see how he can advance in one of the two cars entered by his team here. He's sharing with uh, Kevin Schwartz. And they, they should be there or thereabouts in the midfield. This is the onboard view for the car starting from the outside of the front row, number 98, with Loris Spinelli on board. And then Gerard van der Horst. You can see van der Horst written large on the side of the car, his own team. On it for several years now. But this time he's stepping up to the Lamborghini Cup class to take on the big chargers. He's running Pro Am, and certainly you don't get much more of a pro in the Super Trofeo than Loris Spinelli. So soon the pace car, the safety car, will peel off into the pit lane. All the field behind needing to get into two by two formations. That, by my reckoning, is 11 full rows of two cars and a single car at the back, which is Franz Conrad. 23 cars in all. The white car is in the hands of pole sitter Carol Bash, alongside the ultra experienced multiple champion in Super Trofeo, Loris Spinelli. He's in 98, almost at a standstill as they creep between turn 15 and turn 16. Of course, they can't go until the lights on the starting gantry. You'll see that any moment now over the start finish straight. They're still red. Five sets of red lights. When they go green is when this field is going to be released. <laughs> it's almost as like they're just wanting to come and park. Normally the cars go a little bit faster. They're waiting, waiting, waiting. Whoever's, it's going to be a pall of tyre smoke when the green lights suddenly go on. Who's going to make the best start? It's not a bad start from pole position. Oh, that's a slightly better start. Actually, slow off the very get-go because they were at a standstill rather than a rolling start. Is it going to be enough for Loris Spinelli not into turn one? But can Carol Bash move across onto the line into turn two? He did just enough, but was slightly wide out of turn two. Give you a chance for Loris Spinelli. But it looks as though grid order has been preserved. Yes, the top four cars in the top four positions as they were. Dean Stone and the red and black car from Bernaldi Motorsport trying to take a look up the inside. He's pulled it off into third place. But at turn six, will he still be in third place? Yes, he is. He's got ahead of Kiko Galbiati. Good and tidy and just enough done by the pole starter, Carol Bash. That's good news indeed. Quite often those first two corners at uh, Mizano can lead to problems. It's so tight and twisty, but today people have behaved very, very well indeed. Now, Carol Bash, I do expect... Oh, dear, unfortunately, we've got a spin of one of the two Conrad cars. And is that Martin? I think that's not Martin Leckman. I think it could be Franz Conrad. I'll see in a second. It's got going. Car number 28 it is. So that is Franz Conrad. He started last, unfortunately, is now what we call very last in motor racing terms. Dean Stoneman now he got into third place, now being challenged up the inside at the kink on the back straight. And Kiko Galbiati clearly got a better exit onto the back straight out of turn 10 and has resumed his third position in the race, having lost it as early as turn four on the opening lap. Stoneman isn't taking no for an answer. Stoneman's first season in uh, Lamborghinis. He's raced all sorts of single-seaters and other cars, but he's uh, certainly making a very good fist of it in this early stage in the race. 
At the end of the opening lap, Carol Bass will uh, complete that first lap in the lead of the race. What's his advantage over the second place car? Just over a second over Loris Spinelli. Then there's really quite a gap back to third place. Another two and a half seconds. And then Linus Stern in behind. 11 pushing on very hard. Kevin Gillardoni. He is for target racing. So in the Pro-Am class, it's the first two cars, as we expected, from the front row. They're pulling clear because that's their pro element of their Pro-Am liner. And the Am will take over later on. The next up car in Pro-Am is down in 11th. That's Elias Nes Niskanen, a Finnish racer. And then the top and racer who won the class last night, Cedric Lima. He's sharing with uh, Laurent Genie. He's 12th overall for Auto Vitesse. And already on the second lap, those first two pulling clear. Kiko Gilbiati cannot live with their pace. He's got Dean Stoneman. Well, he had Dean Stoneman harrying him, but having got back ahead, he's pulling away. Maybe he can set off after the first two, but already in the first of the three timing sectors around this lap. The first two cars pulling clear and the race leader Carol Bash just eating a tiny tenth of a second here or there as he stretches his advantage over Carol Bash. This is what a, both these Pro-Am drivers have to do. They have to get as much of an advantage as they can to hand over to their less speedy, less experienced teammates. So Carol Bash, fastest in sector one. Sector two, it's him again. Looks like he's going to gain about three, four tenths of a second on this lap over the chasing of Loris Spinelli, but Spinelli equally dropping those behind. Kiko Galbiati at the head of that queue in third place overall, but falling away from the ultimate, ultimate pace. First to second goes out to 1.2 seconds. Better end to the lap there from Loris Spinelli. Better at the third sectors. But in terms of time, yeah, it was about 0.15 of a second gained. I expected Carroll actually on last night's form to gain rather more than that, but maybe he's being kind to the tyres, being careful in the opening laps. The tyres have to last through the duration of this 50-minute race and with tyres at track temperatures of around 44 degrees, push too hard too soon. And you might pay the price, but certainly your teammate will do that. Look back to the start. It looked like a really good start by Loris Spinelli on the front row, but Carol Bash was, had the initial shove, but he had just enough to be ahead into turn one. More importantly, he was able to then move across, take the line into turn two, often the car on the outside in turn one. Then is on the inside for turn two and can uh, hold position. But uh, the pole had done just enough. So he took the lead at the start and he's stretching his way clear little by little at the front of the race. Looking for cameo rolls. Number seven, driven by Patrick Liddy, started seventh and is in seventh place. So the American not yet making the progress. But as you can see, it's line astern for the field as they run out of turn 10. Down the back straight through the kink at 11. Another kink at 12. And they have to start thinking very seriously about braking to 13, which is another kink, and then immediately into 14, where it's hard, hard on the anchors. Franz Conrad, having had that spin, is uh, way out at the back of the field. It's him a while to recover, kick the tail of the car around, get back on his way. The Conrad car you can see at the end of the train is one driven by his teammate, so that's uh, Martin Lechman. So they're both at the tail end of the field. Three laps completed, 1.6 seconds, the good now, Carol Bash. He's gained a quarter of a second that time around. So little by little, he's putting clear and maybe almost lot by a lot. The gap between Spinelli in second and Kiko Galbiati, who's best the rest in third, is growing all the time. It's out to four seconds now. Don't forget all the, literally the rest of the cars in the top 10. In fact, every one of the other cars in the top 10, apart from the top two, a pro-pro driver pairings, the front two, a pro-am, so necessarily their second drivers will not be as quick as the second drivers in all the cars that are giving chase in the top ten. Marcus Pavrud has lost a position around the last lap, and Milos Pavlovich, one of last night's winning duo, along with Raul Guzman, has moved up into fifth. So car number 41 for target racing, now setting off after Dean Stoneman, but he's got to find oh, getting on for two seconds. Stoneman is the second car on the line here, the black and red livery, and the car giving chase now, having just moved up into that fifth position, is the black one of Milos Pavlovich. Drivers running out wide, using the curbs. Every driver here at the circuit at Misano is warned about track limits. All tracks expect their track limits to be adhered to any transgression has to have a very good reason because if you're finding a performance advantage by going out all four of your wheels beyond the white line that marks the circuit edge then the race officials want to give you start giving you warnings and then penalties 
Front few cars, though, looking very, very tidy indeed. And at this stage in the race, fewer excuses for getting it wrong because your tyres still have plenty of life in them. Bit of a fight back there. Loris Spinelli all but matching Carol Bass's advantage. It's 1.65 seconds now, so almost evens between them as the fifth lap was completed. Lots of drivers actually now just starting to get into the swing of things, all starting to put in quicker laps. They've settled down, perhaps running a little further away from each other, a little more chance to keep to the line they are choosing rather than having interference of other cars in traffic. So when they're running in line, a stern formation. Kika Galbiati being chased by this driver. Dean Stoneman, car number 33 for Bernaldi Motorsport. Third and fourth. Third, the bright green nose, Imperiali racing in behind Stoneman. Then in behind him was the driver who gained a place the previous lap, Milos Pavlovich, uh, trying to see if he can close them down at the moment. No, actually going the other way. Serb just getting back in the swing. He's been out of uh, this level of racing for a few years, but certainly last night, well, he was one of the two drivers uh, taking the winner's trophies back to their truck in that race in full darkness. Just to point out, of course, this is a 50-minute race, the second of two here at Mizano. Last night's was uh, started with a little bit of light in the sky, but majority of it in full dark skies. And today, very, very different conditions. But again, in a 50-minute race, when the clock at the top of the screen gets to saying there are 20 minutes, 30 minutes to go, they can start making their pit stops. And as long as they're all completed by the time it says 10 minutes, to, uh, 20 minutes to go, uh, then all is fine. Everybody has to have that mandatory pit stop. If you're driving solo, you stay on board the car. If you're Driving as one of a pairing, you have the driver change. Minimum time you're allowed in the pit stop, so it balances it all up. But it's a question of when you call your pit stop. If you're stuck behind a faster car, or behind a slower car, you're the faster car, but you cannot get the cork out of the bottle, it's probably better to come in and give your teammate a go, hoping that you will actually make the passing maneuver when in the pit. Carol Bash, the race leader, more than two seconds the good clear of Loris Spinelli, the gap back to third place to Kiko Galbiati, 4.3 seconds. What a great little tussle going on between Marcus Pavrod in number two for Leipzig Motorsport and DSM Racing number seven, Patrick Liddy and Kevin Russell in number nine, another car from the Target Racing team, getting very busy indeed. There they are in that little battle, the red nose of Marcus Pavrod's car, number two in sixth place, through to Kevin Russell in eighth. There's Kevin. Again, just looking up and down the order, just keeping an eye on the AM class. It belonged to Porto Vitesse, Cedric Lima last night. Massimo Mantovani, though, could and should have won the class, but he had to serve a drive through because he was speeding in the pit lane during, well, not his driver change because he was staying on board. So he had to visit another time and ended up second in class. But in terms of race pace at the moment, which is the quicker of them? Cedric Lima looking very handy. One minute 37 second last time around his lap. One minute 36.9 for Mantovani. So precious little between the pair of them. First to second, 2.7 seconds now, so a much better lap from Carol Bash. 4.2 seconds back to third place, Kiko Galbiati. But he's got a comfortable cushion. He's about one and a half seconds or thereabouts ahead of Dean Stoneman. And Stoneman is having to look in his mirror as Milos Pavlovic trying to catch him. The field has strung out at this point. It was much closer last night. And the second of the Vincenzo Sospiri cars has had a problem. Number six come around the final corner has come to a stop facing the pit wall it's got going again presumably just a little bit of a rotation there but that's the car shed by Oli Kangas did he just have the standard spin over the curbing and then stall the car scatter the field behind but Oli Kangas the Finnish racer then presumably couldn't get it going looks like we've got a right rear puncture very much of the flat variety did that happen before the corner or over those sausage strips on the outside but oh, of course he's now got to go the whole way around the circuit but about a four and a half kilometre run with a broken front right tyre, nothing in it and uh, that's rattling its way, I don't suggest you're going to manage that the whole way around, so I think it's a park it job bit of a sideways moment there, down in the running but dramatic moments and over the years we've seen so many drivers going wide out of the final corner turn 16, risking puncture over the yellow and black rumble strips you can see out on the outside but it may well be that tyre had gone down from possible contact at turn 14. 
uh, before they reach that point. But for the second VS Racing car, it's probably over and out for this race. But for the first one, it's leading the race. That's very good news indeed for the team. Carol Bash doing what he can to stretch his advantage, getting closer to a three-second margin that he's built up. Doris Spinelli is still lapping as fast as he can. The difference between their best laps is about a quarter of a second, but still the best lap of the race, the fastest lap of the race. To this man, Carol Bash, leading the race. One, two, three. That is pretty much three seconds. Back to Loris Spinelli, who's got uh, about that margin and half of that again. He's about four and a half seconds clear of Kiko Galbiati. Here we are riding with Loris Spinelli, but he's looking at the ever smaller race leader, the car of Carol Bash stretching its way clear we've got another spinner this time it's car number 21 that's gone around life at motorsports yuri wagner and takis filiopoulos and it's takis on board he was seen at the side of the track last night as well i think he probably had a spin then but definitely now doesn't appear to be any damage to the car but it's sitting quite possibly facing the wrong way i'm trying to pick out where that was on the circuit but for the swiss driver turn number six we're told that's when you're trying to go onto the infield straight and uh, sometimes you try and bite a bit too much curb on the inside and uh, that pitches the car into a rotation so for spiliopoulos he's got to gather it up and get going all over again but that's dropped him right down the order first place carol bash as before except before he wasn't three seconds clear now he's 3.149 seconds the good then Kiko Galbiati, the best part of five seconds down in third place. Dean Stoneman, too busy fighting uh, to get it all going again. Um, and he can't get off after Kiko Galbiati. He's fighting very hard with Milos Pavlovich at the moment. So you take what's around them. Suddenly been a little bit dramatic with spinners and the puncture. Did it result from the spin for Oli Kangas or was it what caused the spin? But either way, spinning through the final corner. Cars behind scattered, did very well to avoid hitting him as he sat there sideways across where they were trying to place their cars so again drivers having to really be on their toes let's have a look at a replay that's spinning into a corner rather than out and that's the 21 that's Takis Filiopoulos there's the replay he hasn't done it again for that moment when he's you then got to try and gauge exactly which way you're facing check that the marshals are flagging that all is clear to do so and then you want to spin the car back round and get on your way but your tires will not be as sweet ever again number nine great little battle here patrick liddy in number seven and number nine what was the second of the conrad motorsport cars doing there a little moment coming up the start finish straight that's is that the one that had the spin earlier in the race is it, if it's number 28, it's Fran Conrad, but it's not. It's the sister car, number 29. That's Martin Lechman. Couldn't quite gauge if he had a problem going through that final corner as well. Ca caught me, just caught the action out of the corner of my eye. There's the car in second place. Already lapped him. That's Loris Spinelli. So the race leader is through as well. That was over four seconds. Who is now three and a half seconds. Not a great deal of change between Carol Bass leading the race and Loris Spinelli in second place, but it's also how they get around the tail end of the back markers. Hopefully they stay out of the way. Hopefully they interrupt the pace and the momentum of the cars at the front of the field, because that's uh, not what the doctor ordered. But Spinelli, all those years of experience as a super trophea racer, and he picked his way back uh, around Franz Conrad very easily indeed. It's not looking quite as easy for the driver in third place, Kika Galbiati wanted to get turned in through turn nine and to swing into turn 10 rather pinched line and that might give hope for those giving chase including dean stoneman in fact stoneman has gained half a second in the last lap and now this lap he and the chasing milos pavlovich are, are closing right in on him mm, things might be changing patrick liddy number seven still fighting long and hard with kevin russell and Takis Spiliopoulos having a little bit of geographical confusion there. He's got it wrong at turn two. So I'm afraid he's not having the, the race of dreams at the moment. That's two spins for the driver with the Swiss license, but the very, very Greek name. Great battling here for seven and nine. I could enjoy watching this all the way up to the point at which the pit lane will be open. The pit window will be open in three and a quarter, three quarter minutes. But right now, don't expect Patrick Liddy in seventh in number seven and Kevin Russell in eight the target racer uh, to come in having great fun 
but of course who's having the most fun of all the driver in the lead of the race that is carol bash his advantage though actually he's not having as much fun he's just lost a second of his advantage i, I feared he might have been slightly slowed by the tail enders as he came across them loris spinelli made a better fist of going through past them so that has bought him a second back and don't forget both Carol Bash leading the race and Loris Spinelli are trying to gain every fraction of a second they possibly can because they're handing over to AM level teammates, drivers of less pace and experience or more age in certain cases, get above a certain age and you become bronze. As your hair turns silver, you become bronze. I suppose that's a factor. Loris Spinelli very, very tidy down towards the end of the lap through turns 12 and 13, 14 tidily done, then the left-hander at 15, they won't be going to the pitch yet, no one will for the next few minutes, but they will stay out until the pit window is about to close rather than having just opened, so expect Carol Bass leading the race, Loris Spinelli in second place, to build as much of an advantage as they can before they go to the pits, but now you can see the race leader Carol Bass again being delayed between turns 1 and 2, he's caught one of the tail enders, it's how he can get around it without losing any time, he lost a second on the previous lap and that was a gift to Loris Spinelli, who was very, very positive. But it's it's not a criticism of either of the drivers. If you get the driver of a slower car at a certain point on the circuit and they're obstructing by being in the middle of the circuit, you have to just seed a little bit of momentum and not get uh, too close in behind them. So the Pro-Am class still being led by the first two cars in the race outright. The third car in the Pro-Am class is down in 11th place, still Elias Niskanen in an all-finished pairing, the number 30 car entered by Leipzig Motorsport and the fellow Finn, Mikko Eskalainen, will take that over next. Leading car in the AM class, still Cedric Leimer. Likewise, that has a, a driver waiting in the pits to take it over in the form of Laurent Genie. And in the Lamborghini Cup class, it's Kurt Wagner leading the way. He is down in 18th place overall but a good tidy advantage over Hans Fabry. So for Mikanek Motorsport, who are running the 22 car for Kurt Wagner and Libor Dvoracek, things are looking very good at this stage in the race. Still looking to see how the race leader, has he been interrupted? Has he lost more time as he came up to the second batch of tail enders in the field? Conrad Motorsport car just getting in the way there of... Uh, Marcus Pavarud, I fancy, with Patrick Liddy and Kevin Russell not so far behind. And with those two chasing very hard, you do not want to lose any momentum whatsoever. Yeah, there's Liddy in number seven being pushed super hard by Kevin Russell onto the start, finish straight. I fancy there could be a change of position where they get down to turn one. And around the Conrad car they go, no positional change there. pit window opens in 15 seconds so for the front runners they could choose to come in next time around but don't expect them to do so because Carol Bash in the lead now now by 3.2 seconds from Loris Spinelli they need to stay out as long as they can there is the race leader he pulled away from pole position Spinelli from the outside the front row couldn't quite challenge him into turns turns one and two there is the blue car with the yellow wing mirrors in the background that is Spinelli you'd have to look nearly another seven seconds back up the order for Kiko Galbiati but don't forget Galbiati and the rest of the top 10 all have pro drivers taking over in the second stint. The first two cars of Carol Bash and Loris Spinelli have drivers of lesser experience in the form of Andre Lewandowski and Ger Gerard van der Horst. So they're going to be having their fingers crossed that any advantage they can build now will be built on or at least not have dwindled away in the remainder in the second part of the race. nobody yet in the position to dive into the pit lane they, these two cars going through turn 15 could do it if they so choose and the first of the pit visitors pouring in I think that was Formanek Bronislav but he's further down the order running in the pram class but the top runners continue out on the circuit Carol Bash his advantage over four seconds now it's been a good last lap. Don't forget, he was building that sort of advantage. There he goes one more time. Down the start, finish straight. And it looks... Do I suggest that Loris Spinelli's dived into the pits? Oh, sorry. White nose, wrong car. I thought it was the VS Racing car. That's another car further down the order. Sorry, saw it from the front. And Carol Bash's car is as white as can be with those blue and yellow flashes up over its flanks. 
It's the, the race livery of former racer of real merit, Vincenzo Sospiri. Poor fellow, when he finally made it to Formula One, he, he ended up with a team that lasted but one race. That was the Lola team at the start of, uh, let's do the counting, 1997. And he and Ricardo Rosset were left with um, very little to do after the first qualifying session. Over and out for them, I'm afraid. And for the team. Dean Stoneman has really, really come alive. He was a while ago, one and a half seconds down on Kiko Galbiati. Went even more than that, but now it's coming down. 1.2 seconds down at the start of the lap. Galbiati trying his all to stay in that third position. Dean Stoneman, of course, will be doing the, the run to the finish as well in the car that's fourth. Whereas Kiko Galbiati will hand over to Vito Postiglioni. What a pairing. They, took, they did two races here last year and took the two victories and now the front runner starting to peel in and that was the car from third place so Dean Stoneman moves up into third Kiko Galbiati moves into the pits Vito Postiglioni be moving into the driver's seat now the Mikonek Motorsport cars suddenly very crowded in their pit both 66 and 22 in the pit not allowed to leave just yet minimum pit stop time so the crew have to be fully aware from pit in to pit out the amount of time they need to have their car at a standstill So cars 88 back into the fray. That's the Lamborghini Cup class. Hans Fabry races that from the start of the race all the way to the finish in the junior class of the four classes of uh, Super Cup racing. We've got the, the Pro class, the Pro-Am class, the Am class and Lamborghini Cup. But uh, a driver who is racing as a pro in a Pro-Am lineup is leading the race. Carol Bash from a driver doing the same job in the background of the shot, Loris Spinelli. Gap between them, four and a half seconds. The last few laps have been really, really good for the Finn. And really, really good for his teammate. Sorry, for the Finn, for the uh, Polish driver. Beg your pardon. All Polish lineup. I think he was looking at the white and blue livery on the car. I suddenly thought, of course, it's Finnish. But it's all pole. Andrei Lewandowski waiting to take over. Karol Bash has still got uh, time. He's probably going to manage two, possibly three more laps before he comes in to make a pit call. I think uh, Spinelli will just follow his moves. And we've obviously had a spinner. Is that number? Oh, it's number 66. Only just out of the pits. And for Jakub Knoll, not yet up to speed. That is almost suggestive of a car that's just recovering, having had a rotation. I can't see any damage on the car as yet. Well, I don't know what the problem is, but he's hardly setting a, a rapid pace as he comes around. I don't know if it's a clutch problem or something. He's certainly not running in a gear, but no, the body of that car is he's going to peel off into this bit of hard standing, I think, down at turn eight. Maybe not. Oh, Carol Bash, race leader. Track, track warning coming your way for turn number six. Well, number 66, persevering round in the hands of Jacob Knoll. Now the sister car number 22, hopefully not too much in the way of our race leader. Libor Dvorak has just taken that over. It's not a point in the race at which drivers are fully sensitive when they're on their outlap. And Carol Bash won't have been enormously pleased with that. Some of the advantage he was trying to gain has definitely been taken away from him. In the background of the shots. Started the lap 5.1 seconds in arrears, but you certainly feel that Loris Spinelli's a little bit closer after our race leader, Carol Bash got blocked for a couple of corners there he's made his way through he's got the pace to do it come what may but just didn't want to put himself on the outside line if he wasn't sure the driver in front of him had really noticed exactly where he was in the track and he wasn't entirely clear the leaderboard Voracek had seen him as he approached turn number nine so caution definitely the more sensible uh, form of behavior to adopt at that point On to another lap. 17 laps will be on the board. What's the gap? It was uh, got out to five seconds between Bass in the lead of the race and Loris Spinelli in second. Loris has got some overtaking to do. 5.4 seconds now. So actually two tenths, three tenths gained by the race leader and Loris Spinelli having to be careful. He's had to go a little bit wider through turn three than he would have wanted a bit tighter out of turn two to avoid the car. He's just passing, putting another lap on. But again, both the first two drivers having to use caution as they were out on the circuit they need to stay out as long as they can they probably have one more lap apiece after this one before they dive into the pit lane the pit lane closes the pit window closes when it's just down to 20 minutes to go in this 50 minute race but for now it's about trying to find well they'd love to find seconds per lap before they hand over to their am teammates but they're trying to find fractions at the moment that's the realistic target and both drivers bass and spinelli doing a very very good job indeed right now 
Bass is travelling without traffic in front of him. That's a first for a while. And with the vast number of drivers diving into the pits, we've actually got the top AM racer, Massimo Mantovani, up to sixth place overall. But he owes us a pit stop, so that would see him tumbling down to about probably the 15th position. Max Veering, he's not getting out. The young Dutch racer, he's racing solo. Dean Stoneman in third place, he is also racing solo. And so they will be feeling very tired indeed after this 50 minutes. And not that long to recover since last night's 50 minutes of racing. So expect this to be the last lap. At the end of this lap, these drivers, the front two runners, will dive into the pit lanes to hand over to their respective teammates, staying out as long as they can. The interesting thing, of course, is the car. As we look at the graphic, it's been a good few laps for Carol Bass. Loris Spinelli has lost time. He's 6.7 seconds in arrears now. So the last three laps have been very, very good for the pole at the front of the race. Riding on board with Loris, he's coming through turn six onto that infield straight rumbling the curves on the outside see even the straight here isn't a straight it's a kink under the bridge at turn seven then hard braking as smooth a line as you possibly can through turn eight let's just listen to the rumble as he accelerates away one of the cars that that uh, will be possibly challenged by is 33 dean stoneman Driving it solo, got up to third place, had been running in fourth, may have a chance for podium today. But a car that may not actually have a chance at the podium today, weirdly, is the one that's leading the race. Carol Bash doing as much as he can. He'll hand over to Andre Lewandowski and his fellow pole will have to do his utmost to hang on. So look, 21, 37, not enough time left on the clock for Carol to go around one more time. There he is, turning to left, diving into pit entry and expect the Van der Horst car to do the same. Ooh, coming through turn 15 a little bit faster, seemingly. Have to do that quick in-lap thing that drivers really, really like to do, but sometimes get it a little bit wrong. But uh, the gap between them was 6.7 seconds at the start-finish line last time around. It will be confused as uh, it will be about the same as they come to a standstill, but hard to tell because their positioning of their pits according to the start-finish line. If one's on one side and one's the other, in fact, you can see they are precisely that. It will be an inaccurate element because the second car has not crossed the start-finish line and it's at a standstill. So Andre Lewandowski will take over the number 16 Vincenzo Sospiri racing car with 20 minutes or so to try and preserve that lead. I want to see where car number 44 will be. Don't forget Vito Postiglione took that over a few laps ago from Kiko Galbiati and is listed down in eighth place. He could suddenly be up back into third, may even get up towards second place because certainly we know that uh, as soon as Vito gets in that car, it's going to go very, very quickly indeed in a pro pro lineup but we've still got a prime car listed at the top of our charts but it's got to get back out on the circuit that's one with andre Lewandowski in the middle of our image the white car with the yellow and blue flashes great job there by carol bash slightly interrupted by traffic but the fact was he got six and a bit seconds clear before the pit stops came to be so for andre Lewandowski, this is serious serious time for him now He's got to see if he can deliver, if he can continue with that car in the lead of the race. It's going to be hard because he knows he's got quicker drivers behind him, but it's a, a challenge that these drivers all like. He was the AM champion for the Lamborghini Series back in 2017 and again the following year. So he's great at that level, but he's going to be racing against the pros and he's going to have to really, really be on his toes. And likewise, Gerard van der Horst leaving the pits in the car that uh, arrived from second place. But right now, Imperiali racing, followed by Dean Stoneman. So that's Vito Postiglione into turn one, into turn two. Dean Stoneman giving chase. And then looks like the number seven car in behind that as well, which should be Jonathan Chicotto. Pit window has now closed. All the teams have made that mandatory pit stop. to see where Andre Lewandowski is relative to the opposition. He should be in the lead of the race, but will the gap have come down? Oh, Andre adjusting the series, steering really quite a lot there, just trying to get the feel of the car, but uh, that looked a, a wee bit twitchy as he turned into turn nine. Got the job done. He's now down the back straight. If anything, the gap has gone out before that long visual down the back straight from turn 11 to turn 10. 
The Gerard van der Horst car, when driven by his teammate Loris Spinelli, was slightly closer. So, yet that was the car that looked at had a better inlap. Certainly, the end of the inlap, uh, Loris Spinelli was very quick through the final, well, the penultimate corner, turn 15, before diving into pit lane. But it does seem that Gerard van der Horst has lost a bit of ground since coming out of the pits. Let's see when the clock really gets on these cars. So, that should be 20 laps completed. Just waiting for the timing screen to confirm that. 8.23 seconds is the advantage. Van der Horst is in second place still. Vito Postiglione is still in third, but he's got Dean Stoneman all over his tail. So, plenty of time for positions to change. Fifth place, Raul Guzman in one of the winning lineup last night. He's up to fifth, but he's eight and a bit seconds down on Dean Stoneman. That's a big ask in the towards the end of the race. And then, unfortunately, 22, having a bit of a body rub down between turns 13 and 14. Sort of rather elbowed out the way. Number two following through as well. That was uh, Jonathan Chicotto diving through first. And then number two, the driver who put it on pole last night, Sebastian Baltazar. Look for him. He's just banged in that car's fastest first sector, second sector, and third sector. He's already on the move. And just to reiterate, Sebastian Baltazar last competed in a little Indian single-seater championship. The MRF Challenge in the winter of 2015-2016 has been out of the cockpit since. Arrived here, first race of the season, whacked it on pole. Set it all, really. Let's see how he races now. So already Gerard van der Horst starting to lose lose ground. Unfortunately, he came out in second place. Looks as I think that could have been Dean Stoneman passing him. Yes, he's back to fourth because Vito Postiglione in the bright green car, Imperial Racing, up into second place, top of your shots. Third place now, Dean Stoneman. Next person to set off after uh, Gerard van der Horst will be Raul Guzman, but it should be another lap or two or three until he comes into the picture. But Gerhard van Van der Horst racing in lofty company, having spent years competing down in the Lamborghini Cup class at the tail of the field. He's, he's experiencing life afresh by starting up at the very front end of the grouping. So he came out after the pit stops into second place, knew the challenge was coming. Already two cars have got past, but again, he's raising his game. This is exactly why he's decided to step up to Pro-Am. He's got, like everybody else, just under 16 minutes remaining in this race. His advantage over Raul Guzman has gone down by two seconds or so in that last lap. So second place have become third for Gerard van der Horst. And then Dean Stoneman all over the tail, easily up the inside. Ooh, that's a fast place to pass down through the kink at turn 11. And that's Stoneman going through on Gerard van der Horst. So uh, monstered by the two cars that came through, but stayed safe, stayed on his line all under control. Talking control though, Andre Lewandowski, we saw him have that twitchy couple, twitchy moment very early on his outlap, but he's sitting now on an advantage that's larger than it was before the pit stops. 11.6 seconds, the good over Vito Postiglione, but uh, what a fearsome driver to have giving chase because Postiglione has won so much in Lamborghini. He seems a real specialist of the Misano circuit, won both of the races here in 2019 and fancies his chances again. But look, the clock says 15 minutes and less remaining. The lead, 11.697 seconds last time around. It will have come down, but by how much? Out of the final corner, almost every time you look, there seems to be a Conrad Motorsport car in view. But second and third, the green car in second, of Vito Postiglione and diving up the inside of the Conrad car goes Dean Stoneman in third. The gap has come down. It was a it was 11 seconds, it's now 9.7 seconds. So on that lap alone, best part of two seconds gained by the chasing Postiglione. And maybe hope is arriving in the form of the arrival of the cavalry of Dean Stoneman. Maybe somehow, well, he might choose to just fight and use the slipstream of Postiglione to, to work their way closer to the race leader. They will cut him back, but can they do it in 14 minutes? Stoneman brings experience from uh, racing a Stracker McLaren in the Blanc Pan Endurance Series. Did his Le Mans debut in a Manor Ginetta, but a lot of his, uh, most of his early stage racing was in single seaters, including Formula Two, where he was champion a long time ago, a decade ago. But uh, class will out, and he's settling into Lamborghinis very well indeed. And if ever you want a yardstick, it's Vito Postiglione. And again, double that when he's on home ground at Misano. And if you can match his pace, you are on the pace. 
a simple, simple, simple equation. Really see how Stoneman is pressing on. A little bit of a track limit abuse there, but fairly sensible within it. Not too crazy, but certainly throwing the Bonaldi car around in second place. Much smoother lines from Vito Postiglione. Smooth, but certainly not slow. Remember last time round, the gap was uh, had fallen to, by two seconds to so 9.7 seconds. What's going to be the gap to the race lead at 7.1? So, oh dear, at this rate, it's not going to be a success story, surely, for Andrei Lewandowski. But will there be salvation from some other route? I fear it's going to be too big a challenge for Lewandowski. But uh, racing in new territory at the front of the field, when in fact, quite close to the field, they're almost... You could look at it in the field. He was off the circuit, so uh, he's making his own errors. He's maybe starting to become a bit flustered. His pit board or message from the crew will be telling him they're coming after you. He knows that, but he has to keep his cool and has to hang on. Massimo Mantovani, car number 53, leading in the AM class. He's got ahead of uh, the Auto Vitesse car that Cedric Leimer had in the lead. Laurent Jenny not able to match the pace, but uh, certainly... Mantovani looking very, very settled indeed. And that class lead in 14th place overall. But he's got an advantage of about 12 seconds over the Auto Vitesse car, so looking very comfortable indeed. Again, seeing a few drivers slightly getting in the way of the others at the moment. That's Libor Dvorak. We're trying to keep out of the way as the faster cars come through. Not always easy to get out of the way at Mizano. 16 turns come at you left, right and centre. The pink nose you can see there is number 14. And that's uh, running in the prime class. That's Lorenzo Bontempelli. But for the Oregon team, they, they showed great promise yesterday. They've got one car in the pro class. That's running ninth at the moment. Today doesn't seem quite as sweet. So in the Lamborghini Cup class, car number 22 is leading overall. That's Libor Dvorak. That's the one we've been looking at. And again, keeping out of the way. And his advantage in the class over Hans Fabry. Last time I looked, it was just under 12 seconds. Now it's over 15. So it's going the right way for the Czech team. So for Dvorak and his teammate, who will be standing in the pit lane, Kurt Wagner, keeping out of the sun, it could be a class victory. But again, it's the battles within the overall war. Oh dear, car 44, Vito Postiglione, not enough rubber on the tyre, was running second, was hunting down Andrei Lewandowski. That means Dean Stoneman has moved into second place. A right rear puncture. That is an unusual angle. It's normally the front left that goes down around, uh, after loads of abuse around the Misano circuit. But so, two wins here in 2019 for Kiko Gabriati and Vito Postiglione. And suddenly, it's not a green car hoving into view for the race leader, Andrei Lewandowski. It's the black and red car, or grey and red car. Let's see what happened for... Oh, grief! That is a massive off for Vito Postiglione. The tyre obviously went down long before the corner. That was certainly uh, not the way you'd expect Vito to drive with four tyres on his car. That was about 100 metres. And then in behind, unfortunately, probably obscured by the dust, one of the Conrad cars has gone for a spin as well. But spinning off at turn number 12, and there went the car because the tyre. Great camera work there. A big scary moment, and that's why we have gravel traps. But for Lewandowski, the lead comes down and down. It's a different car giving chase. 3.3 seconds now. It's clearly going to happen very soon indeed, possibly in the next two laps. But he, we know his pace isn't as quick as Stoneman in second place, but Stoneman has then got to be able to find his way past. And maybe we'll see Lewandowski is a, a stout defender. But again, it's about all, all, all complaining. It was all about just not making your tyres complain. It's about keeping them sweet. But it's how you can defend. Dean Stoneman over the years has been a very good attacking driver. But it's all a learning process for Lloyd Mendoski. Different territory for him running at the front end of the field. Just see little errors, just little moments where he's not on the optimum line and again having to readjust that doesn't do a great deal of good to the tyres either but look the clock's under 10 minutes oh it's going to be the very long 10 minutes for Andrei Lewandowski but if he can still be there at the end that will be a very very special run for him certainly Carol Bash his teammates did the job required of him
but the whole body language of Dean Stoneman's car is just being driven very, very positively over the kerbs where needed, but closing in all the time. So just remember last time it was 3.294 seconds when they went out of this corner, turn 16 over the start finish line. It's going to be half of that now. Maybe not even that might be down to just over a second between them. They've got the Busson Ginion car just up ahead of them. Let's just check that gap. 1.001 seconds and who has that who's gone pop or is it pop or is it just bodywork rubbing on right rear tire can't see, tell you the car because i can't see the car it's one of the mikonet cars it's uh leeboard Voracek who'd be leading the lamborghini cup class oh that is cruel had an advantage of 15 seconds or so over hans fabry and it's over and out for the czech team there very very disappointing for them because certainly at this stage in the race, just under eight minutes to go, he had that class in his pocket. But we know it's a 50-minute race and it's only over when it's over. And it is almost over there for the leading run of Libor, of um, Andre Lewandowski. As incidents happen around him, Dean Stoneman is closing in all the time. Has the luxury of the pace and the experience of many years of uh, international racing to be able to choose his moment. Being cautious, but he's still got time on the clock. No point taking a risk. Looking left, looking right, but just able to pick his line. You're not going to do it in turn 15. He's probably thinking, right, nice. Nice run through 15. Tick, job done. Onto the start finish straight, right under the rear wing of Andre Lewandowski. Look, he's able to take a far cleaner line through the corner. He's going to have a dive up into turn one. You can see there's a back marker up ahead. It's the Busson Ginian car. Claudio Gosselin at the wheel. He's not going to make the dive there. Try and unseat Lewandowski through turn two. Not happening. Two, th three, three? No. Try and get a better run through turn six and then make the move down to turn eight. That would be the place to do it. But in fact, you know what? I'm not waiting for that. I'm going to go here by turn number four. The move, the move has been made. He had the pace. It was going to happen. So with just over six minutes on the clock, Carol Bass will be looking out from the pits going, well, can we get a podium? We've lost potential victory. Now we're back in second. What's the gap back to third place? It's 10 seconds to Raul Guzman. That should be enough. So second place, that would be huge reward and by far the greatest result in Andre Lewandowski's career as a Lamborghini racer. So now we have a pro car in the lead of the race for the first time in the form of Dean Stoneman. Some question mark. Team manager of car 16, Andre Lewandowski to go to race control to see the stewards hmm now was that involved with the departure of Vito Postiglione Vito Postiglione remember we saw him with a puncture piling off at turn 13 we don't know if there's any contact let's not try and make up the story uh, to fit the bill but the team manager of car 44 that's uh, Postiglione's two race controls as well so 44 and 16 maybe I'm not adding one and two to get three or four We'll find out. But Dean Stoneman, the clock is counting down. Five minutes remaining into the lead of the race for the first time at the end of a lap. And his advantage already a second over Lewandowski. Then Lewandowski getting a little bit caught out behind the AM entry of Claude Yves Gosselin, which means he will fall further back from the new race leader. But he's got a comfortable eight second advantage over Raul Guzman. Guzman, who stepped up from single seaters into cars with Ruse for the first time and took victory last night, might have to make do with third place. But a first and a third on his first outings in the Super Trofeo in Europe will be very, very impressive for the Mexican. He should be very pleased with that indeed. And for Dean Stoneman and Bernardi Motorsport, a chance to go to the top step of the podium and they appear to have taken it and should be able to defend that to the end of the race because certainly he has the pace that Lewandowski just doesn't unfortunately have. So now we have a pro car leading, a pro am in second, and the top car in the next class, the am class, is Massimo Mantovani. He got in the lead in the second half of the race ahead of the Auto Vitesse cars, got a sizable advantage. He should be heading for victory in the am class, and the top car now in the Lamborghini Cup class is Hans Fabry for Imperial Racing. Dean Stoneman should be able to pace it clear. 
Lewandowski drove well, a couple of little errors, but he will have learned from that. And certainly when he looks back at the videos, Carol Bash will say, look, didn't do it quite right in turn nine, compromised you in turn 10, couldn't get the power down, but well done racing at the top level. Whole new experience. It's funny how you could be at one end of the race and learn one thing at the other end of the pack and learn many, many other things. So it's all a learning experience for all drivers. It's just about how they can actually sit on top of the information, process the information, and uh, then take it on and achieve better lap times, more consistent lap times, times that don't take, laps that don't take life out of the tyres. Are there going to be any further changes? Certainly Sebastian Baltazar is now on the tail of Alberto Di Falco. This is the battle for fifth place. Baltazar took pole for yesterday's first race. Certainly got his tail up in that number two car from Leipzig Motorsport. Dean Stoneman counting down the laps in the lead of the race. He's got 29 laps on the board. He's nearly four seconds to the good in the lead of the race. Second place, Andre Lewandowski. He's 5.4 seconds clear of Raul Guzman. Can Guzman make it a first and a second? Or will car number 41 just have to settle for a first last night and a second, a third place today? He's comfortably clear, nearly eight seconds clear of the GSM racing example. Jonathan Chicotto took that over from Patrick Liddy. He's had a very good run towards the flag. Dean Stoneman and looks to have things very much under control for Benaldi Motorsport. Two minutes. He's going to do this lap and one more. Can't quite back it off enough to make sure he gets the checkered flag shown to him next time around. So he's got this lap and one more. His advantage will continue to stretch over Andre Lewandowski. 4.5 seconds to the good now. Then looking back to the, the chasing pack, Raul Guzman, 4.4 seconds further back. So the gap between first and second, the second and third, all but identical. But he's seven seconds clear of the number seven entry of Jonathan Chicotto. Then Alberto Di Falco just goes through your shot. And number two in sixth place, Sebastian Balthazar, slightly closing on Di Falco. But I think with this lap and just one more to go, he's not going to manage it. Car 53 pressing on in the AM class. Massimo Mantovani, his lead, 17 seconds. That's looking very sweet for him in the AM class. Lamborghini Cup class, Imperiali racing at the top. Hans Fabri in car number 88. So surely as they go on to the start of their final lap of the race, all is very cool indeed for the class leaders. All very cool indeed for the race leader, Dean Stoneman. Car 88, that's the one at the top of the charts in the Lamborghini Cup class decent advantage over Martin Leckman, who's next in line for Conrad Motorsport. In fact, a very tidy advantage. And there will be an element of frustration for Mikonek Motorsport. They had Libor Dvoracek leading that El Lamborghini Cup class, but then his car pulled off to the side of the circuit. And suddenly it presented the class, well, what will be the class victory to Hans Fabry. There we go. It's Andrei Lewandowski onto what is the final lap of the race. Both cars went through gap 5.5 seconds to the good, but importantly for Lewandowski, he should be able to come home in second place to add to last night's fourth place off that brilliant chasing drive in the second half of the event by his teammate Carol Bash, who went from 16th up to fourth. Really was flying in the night time. Yeah, Guzman's not going to pull back three seconds in one lap and then also be able to pull off a passing manoeuvre. 33, Dean Stoneman taking no chances, just checking the car he was lapping, could see him. Yes, they could. And that was Hans Fabry, the Lamborghini Cup class leader, pulling out of his way at turn eight. Uh, for the British racer, Stoneman through turn nine into turn 10 for the final time at racing speed, not having to be too flamboyant, go out too wide. If he looks in his mirrors, he can't see. Only now he can see the white car that he passed a handful of laps ago. That's the one in second place, Andre Lewandowski. And then Raul Guzman is catching, but won't be able to close the gap enough to try and get second place. There's the car in second place. White and blue. There is Dean Stoneman leading way around. Last couple of corners to go. 13 becomes 14. 14 goes towards turn 15. There he goes through 15. Then he's got the final 
left-hander onto the start finish straight and he's going to win this race by about six or seven seconds he can back off now it doesn't matter the checkered flag is only for one person that's him doesn't have a teammate he's running solo which makes the win all the more impressive and in second place you can see second and third coming around the final corner with little between them a great chase by Raul Guzman but the grey car will stay in third Andrei Lewandowski will be delighted with that second place came down to under two seconds between them Guzman the Mexican in third so it's Pro winning the race from Pro-Am, and the next Pro-Am is actually down in 10th place overall, Gerard van der Horst. Don't forget, he came in back out into, on, into the field in second place overall. But then he tumbled down the order, and actually, will he have held off Mikko Eskilainen, who was uh, giving chase, trying to get the second place in Pro-Am? I'll let you know when they've both crossed the finish line. But now the, the driver, with the door open, getting some air into the car is Dean Stoneman. He's taken that win for Benaldi Motorsport and uh, well-deserved too. Had a good run yesterday, all on his own. Again, driving solo today and uh, bringing it home. In the background, we've got maybe some possible place changing. Look how tight it is. A, a gaggle of cars trying to come through. One of the Oregon cars looks so it's just gained a position. I think that was Lorenzo Bontempelli gaining a place. Let's take a little look see. But a race of two parts when you have two pro-am driver lineups at the front of the field the pro drivers starting they will necessarily pull clear but it's what the am driver the am half of the equation can do that really tells the story and andre Lewandowski did it really very well indeed and ended up second overall the driver his starting teammate had been fighting against fell unfortunately down the order somewhat and ended up in ninth overall at the end of the race just holding off Bontempelli in that little charge that gaggle of cars we saw uh, a few moments ago just coming out of the final corner so for Dean Stoneman first position for Andre Lewandowski who's coming around just behind him and Raul Guzman it's second and third overall but a balance for Lewandowski taking the Pro-Am victory. So Dean Stoneman, victor overall. Carol Bash and Andre Lewandowski, very good second place and the Pro-Am honours. Third place, Raul Guzman and Milos Pavlovich, victors last night, so a great points haul for them. Patrick Liddy, Jonathan Chicotto, then got quite tight. Kevin Russell and Alberto Di Folco, Sebastian Baltazar and Marcus Pavrud, very close, fourth through to sixth. Car that came top in the AM class, Massimo Mantovani down in 13th overall. Tidy victory over Cedric Lima and Laurent Genie and the top car in the Lamborghini Cup class at the very end still Hans Fabry with Martin Lechman coming home in second place in that class the junior class in 17th and 18th positions overall but really hats off to Dean Stoneman he did it all on his own likewise as you can see Hans Fabry Martin Lechman they ran solo in their cars hot conditions here at Mizano a circuit that really tires you out so for the fallen, for Vito Postiglione, it could have possibly been victory. Ended up with no points after that blowout down into turn 13. But an exciting race, plenty happening. And for Dean Stoneman, I think he's laid down a marker in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo. Maybe he's found his new home. And for Bernardi Motorsport, they will take the plaudits because that was the team that fielded Dean in the victorious car. In the end, winning by a whisker under six seconds from Onde Lewandowski. And now for the drivers, one of the first occasions to really, really So that's it from us. The podium ceremonies will be starting any moment now, but we're moving on because race action is about to start all over again in the next few minutes on the circuit. It's goodbye from me, Bruce Jones.